This is the uh, motion filed by the uh, collectively we call them defendants. Move an answer to dismiss with prejudice. I'll uh, entertain the motion. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as my briefs um, set forth, there this is a, an action arising out of a, an article that plaintiffs claim is defamatory. The article is in relation to his father. Gonna, yes, his father, and um, I guess the father of other plaintiffs in the matter. And his father uh, died 26 years ago. The article was published last year, November um, 22nd, or 21st, I'm sorry, Your Honor, 2010. And um, the complaint arises out of claims of defamation, invasion of privacy, and a failure to run a letter to the editor. As my papers point out, New Jersey law is very clear that a defamation claim that um, arises out of events that occurred after the descendant's death does not survive. The same thing applies to invasion of privacy claims. So there's simply no cause of action arising out of any facts that could be said to be pled in the complaint relating to a defamation or an invasion of privacy claim. Um, because the article is not of or concerning any of the plaintiffs in this matter, it, there can be no claim by the plaintiffs as to defamation with respect to them personally. And the invasion of privacy claims, as I set forth in my papers, it's just not pled in the complaint. I, we cannot define what type of invasion of privacy claim there is, what facts support any sort of invasion of privacy claim. Um, and as to the letter to the editor, uh, the Miami Herald case uh, supports the proposition that there is just no claim for failure to publish a letter to the editor or anything for that matter, with respect to newspapers. Okay. Mr. Zubikov. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, the article uh, being uh, is defamatory in our opinion. There's no question about that. Uh, in fact, there was nothing contained in the article that supported the allegations made by the defendants. None whatsoever. Well, let's assume for the moment that you're correct. But the, the point isn't that it was or was not defamatory. The point is that whatever wrong is alleged occurred after your father had been deceased for over a quarter of a century. Well, correct, Your Honor. However, um, the article uh, goes into detail as to uh, horrific things that were done by my father. In addition to that, uh, it, it talks about uh, uh, facts surrounding what he did, and it implies that he is a, a person of very low moral character. Now, my contention here is that we're involved in this case for the uh, 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 simple reason that we have attempted to uh, protect his honor, uh, not your honor, but my father's honor, uh, after he was uh, killed. Now, I walk around the streets today uh, with the last name of Subzikov, and when people hear my name, uh, they uh, associate me with uh, someone who was accused of committing these horrible acts, who was a killer, a con man, as they say, a liar. Uh, uh, I could go on and on with specifics, but I live this life. And people have, have come to conclusions about me because of who my father is, in light of the fact that people like the record, and, and, and the clowns that work for them write these falsehoods about people. Uh, the, the case law does not say that I am barred from bringing a claim for, uh, for defamation because I am uh, uh, a reflection of my father. I carry on for my father. I have represented my father in a number of matters since he was killed. So for them to contend that I have no basis to bring a claim under defamation is frankly untrue. Clearly, the case law says that there has to be some nexus between what I have um, or our family has uh, uh, endured or has to be concerning, uh, has to be somewhat concerning of us. There's a, there's a sort of a vague area in that regard. And, and I, I don't dispute the fact that the, the, the case law is not on point that says that Aslan has a case in, 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 in the circumstances. Oh. It does not say... I, yeah. I, I appreciate I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, I, I'm certainly going to let you... You know, address the point uh, in a full fashion. But the article, um, uh, which, and we'll, we'll accept that it, it's, it's not accurate, 
that it's, it is uh, defamatory. It, it speaks to uh, allegations about your father um, in 2010 and about events that occurred 70 years ago now, my math uh, being what it is, approximately, um, and, and, and later. Um, so, and all of this occurs, all this article occurs, as I said, 25 or more years after your father was, uh, was killed. But it published last year. It, it, it was issued that was point. sealed. That's the point. I mean, the if, if obviously if he were uh, alive and this article was published, uh, we would not be entertaining this motion. You know, the the issue would be sufficiently uh, joined that uh, it, it would not be amenable to a motion to dismiss on the pleadings. Uh, but the point that uh, that the defendants raise is that regardless of what they said, you know, they said they said it about your father, and. Clearly, in your argument, you're addressing uh, that specifically. You acknowledge that the, um, the gravamen of the article is addressed to conduct attributed to your father, which you find to be uh, outrageous and uh, defamatory in nature, but not addressed to you or any other member of your family. The implication is that by defaming your father, they also defame the name Zubzakov and anyone who, who bears it. That's, that's, I think, where you're going at this. That's correct. Right. Well, and there's a basis for that. And the basis being? Being that I have uh, sought to find um, justice for my father since he was killed. Uh, I've, I have uh, had uh, cases against the federal government. I have uh, attacked people on the internet who tried to defend my father's name, uh, as well as different publications throughout uh, whatever I've been uh, notified of them. So, and, and people come to me and say, is that your father? And, 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 and meaning that they read about this article. And is this about your father? What does that imply about me? Clearly the cases say, Judge, there's a small window. There's a small window that says people like them have to be held accountable for what they do. They can't go around saying bad things about anybody they want to and get away with, get away with it. Especially under facts like this. The cases do not say the door is closed to me. It does not say that. It's well, a small window, but it's not I'm closed. not sure where the window is bre breached, Mr. Subzakov, to be quite honest with you. I am, I'm not unsympathetic to the concerns that you have, and I can readily understand how you know, reading an article of this nature uh, would cause you a, a great deal of, of concern and, and anguish. Um, but the question here is whether you have a a cause of action, whether you can institute a legal proceedings uh, against the either the author or the publisher of, of that article, and um, compel them to uh, address you in terms of, of damages for this this wrong. I mean, look, Frank, the, the damages we seek is uh, is a, a, the ability to publish a, a letter within. Well, we'll get that to that in a moment. Yeah. We'll get to that in a moment. You know, the, I mean, certainly there, are, there have been, uh, history, history is full of, of people who uh, have been, you know, tarnished by deeds and acts uh, attributed to, uh, to relatives. Uh, I mean, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, Ms. Marina Oswald, uh, uh, defamed by articles that, that appear to this day some 40 some odd years after the death uh, assassination of John Kennedy uh, for things that are said about her husband I mean uh, I don't think so I mean it, it, it's an event that uh, quite frankly uh, time uh, does not at least those of us who were alive at the time when it happened it doesn't uh, uh, dilute its uh, its impact uh, on the, uh, the uh, effect of the citizens of this country. Uh, how about uh, others uh, who uh, are, and I'm not putting your, your father into a category, but there were, you know, was it John Gacy, the uh, serial killer? I mean, does, does any member of his family have the right to uh, uh, bring an action because a, an article which 
may not be uh, completely accurate, may be uh, totally inaccurate. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, I'm taking extreme examples, I think, but do their relatives have the right to seek redress against uh, media outlets that publish information inaccurate against them after their, de their death? Well, Your Honor, most respectfully, the, the examples that you brought forth this morning are people who are convicted of committing these uh, horrendous acts. My father was never convicted of doing anything wrong, has never convicted of hurting anyone. The, the, the distinction that you make, and it's a, it's a valid one, that they are, uh, and, and neither was Lee Harvey Oswald. He, he never got his day in court. Uh, but I think the distinction is one that um, it's, it's not one that's, that's substantive. The, the point is that uh, the time does not necessarily dilute the uh, importance of some events. I, I happen to have a, a clear recollection of, of the events that unfolded around your father's uh, 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 death, which, as I recall, was not the first attempt on his life uh, back, back then. Um, but it, it was certainly a, a crime of extreme uh, notoriety at the time. And now, apparently, there is additional information uh, that is coming to, uh, to the fore with, uh, uh, with information that may uh, be you know, filtering out of the federal government. But even if it's all wrong and it causes you grief, it's about your father. Can a newspaper be held responsible because people erroneously um, label you with acts or deeds that are attributed to the father? I mean, we don't have, uh, I mean, our Constitution clearly prohibits laws that punish people because of the sins of their, of their relatives. We, we, we just don't permit that. And if someone uh, thinks less of you because of this article, um, it's not because the, the record is, is, is to be held accountable, it's because they haven't, you know, sufficient maturity to understand that there is a distinction between who you are and what the record may allege your father was. So I don't, I don't see where there is a basis in, in, the, uh, in the jurisprudence of our, our state, not only our state, but it seems to be um, the prevailing view throughout the country that a, an article or other media uh, re, uh, account about an individual who is deceased, which may be defamatory, is not actionable by the survivors. Is that a question? That's, I mean, which case helps me get, get past that hurdle? I mean, just, within my brief, you... I know, there was a California case that you, you cited, but I don't think that really supported your view. <coughs> Furthermore, there's a case in the District of New Jersey by uh, Justice Sarkin. Judge Sarkin. Sarkin. That clearly shows there's some um, sympathy or opportunity for people uh, such as myself to seek uh, uh, retribution, if you will, against people act, correct? Just refresh my recollection as to which one. There it is. Uh, I have it here. This is uh, Terminella. Is that from the District of New Jersey, Your Honor? And that's uh, Judge Stearns. Uh, no, it's by Judge Sorokin. Hold on, let's see. I believe it's McDonald. McDonald, right. Page 14 of my. Let me get there. Hold on. I thought I had all of your cases. I beg your pardon, Judge. Mm -hmm. Well, except that the distinction there is whether the events which gave rise, I think the McDonald case, um,
I think the, as I recall, the events which occurred, the, I think the publication occurred before he died, and then he subsequently died. Which publication, Your Honor? The, in, in Time Magazine, in the McDonald case. You mean it's pursuant to the survival statute? Right. But I don't think so. I think it was after he died. I don't think so. I have the case, Your You got the case? Yeah, you can hand it. I didn't print them all out. And Your Honor is correct. The publication was in 1980, 81, and then he dies in 82. Yeah. That's, that's just my recollection. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, in, in Time and Life published uh, alleged defamatory articles about uh, Ken McDonald in uh, 1980, and uh, then he, he died in 1982. So the question was whether or not the, the claims that he had, you know, died with him, and Judge Sorokin held they didn't. But that's not what we're dealing with here. We also have Canio versus New York. It's a district, uh, federal case, uh, New Jersey, I'm sorry, a state court. case, yes, yeah, Supreme Court case. Right, but that, that's, that's consistent with the, the holding in McDonald that the, the, the cause of action, I mean, the, the gravamen of the complaint is that while a person is alive, if he or she is subject to defamation, does the cause of action that accrued during their, during their life expire when they expire? No. But you got a distinction here, Your Honor, most respectfully, and that is uh, uh, the defendants published or wrote, wrote an article that, were, that was dated 26 years after my father was killed. And for them to uh, bring forth this type of claim uh, or bring forth this type of uh, information, which is clearly untrue. There's only one. Uh, uh, well, we haven't tested. None of the the allegations have been tested for their truthfulness. We're accepting, for the sake of the argument, that they are untrue. But you know, whether or not truth would ultimately be a defense is not before us today. I understand, Your Honor. But please understand that. Uh, they, they have consistently throughout the years, and, and I guess in November of 2021, 2010 was the, the end of it all for us. Uh, they have consistently stated that, you know, Chirim Supsiko, A, B, C, D, and, you know, you just can't address it. You can't address it. But I, I think now they're relying on some information that came out five years before their article, and they wrote a, 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 a stinging article defamatory article about my father. Uh, I think that this case, my case, my father's case here is different than all those cases you're reading there. Well, and there's no published case. your father's case, case that then clearly were, were not on, on solid ground. The case here is not brought on behalf of your, your deceased father. It's sure. on behalf of sure, but, you but, and, and your siblings but, but, and the survivors. But my father's family lives on. And they cannot live on with people or newspapers like the record being in existence who continuously attack my father's past for the things that were never even proven for over 26 years of doing this. It's got to end somewhere, Your Honor. You know, and we, we at least try to get a, 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 a provide them with a letter with the accurate uh, resp our, our response to what they wrote. They wouldn't even do that, Judge. They're, they're claiming there's guidelines and they can't put. I mean, the truth is the truth, but they don't want to hear the truth. Don't put their version out there for everybody to see. And that's the, wrong. The yeah. problem, of course, Mr. Zubzikov, is that the truth often lies in the eyes of the beholder. And obviously, for good and compelling reasons, you have a, a firm uh, view about the accuracy and or inaccuracy of what was published in the newspaper uh, about your father. I mean, you, you knew him, uh, obviously, for your for your life um, and have a perspective. Um, 
I can't uh, make the judgment, and it's not my responsibility to make a judgment as to whether or not the the truth is the truth as you understand it, or the truth as Mr. Kelly uh, ascribed it in his uh, acerbic article. Uh, but the the problem here is is profound. You and your family obviously are aggrieved by things that are said about your late father. Um, things that, if not true, are certainly uh, cause for for great anguish. No one wants to be called a murderer, a liar, a Nazi. You know, these are these have stigma uh, attached to them uh, that. Or, well, no, I don't have to, you know, repeat the history of, of uh, how um, offensive it is to be uh, labeled a Nazi. The problem, of course, is that the we have a, a press, a free press, and they are certainly not free to do anything they want and say anything they want. They can't attack individuals with reckless abandon and put, put out uh, you know, knowingly false and wantonly reckless statements about individuals. There is in this, this void, this area between the free press and the, and the rights of individuals, a, an area that we have to sometimes accept that there are things that are going to happen which are not exactly the way we would like them to be and that we are going to be offended by them. But we, we tolerate uh, that to, to a large extent because there is a, a, a long and value, valuable history about the freedom of press and how it plays an integral part in the maintenance of our democracy. Now we can get into a long discussion about about the viability of, of the print media and uh, whether it's going to continue to be play that, that historical role or not and whether it has always played a historical role. Yellow journalism is uh, a term that uh, I'm sure all of us have heard about and sometimes or, or another. But there's a balance there. We need in order to maintain a society that is informed and can keep its government accountable, a press that forms a function of putting its prying eyes on things that might not otherwise come to, to light. In doing that, we have to accept that there's going to be stumbles and mistakes along the way. And not every one of them is going to be actionable. We don't give them free license. They said they can't just uh, go around, um, you know, tarring and feathering people uh, in, a, in a wanton fashion. But there is a limit because we understand that to put too much restriction on the on the uh, on the media, the press, um, has a very chilling effect. And I think, given you know the, where your family came from, you would understand that, because the the culture and the climate, you know, they came from um, the Circassians, right? Correct. Yes. Which was part of the, the Soviet Union. Certainly not the bastion of free press during the years that uh, the Soviet Union existed, and probably still not even part of the the hallmark of a, of a free and uh, viable press even today. But Judge, if you're saying what you're saying, uh, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I don't agree with, most respectfully, I don't agree with what you're saying, because they have had license. They have had the ability to say these consistent lies about my father since the time after he was killed. And look how vicious they are. They have done that as late as a year ago. The reason why I haven't printed anything after that is because they know I'm going to sue them. That's why they stopped. Now, once 
should this case be dismissed and not appeal, they will continue to do that again. I have to continue to come back to the court again. I mean, there's a limit, Judge, and no, where's the limit, Judge? They're going to keep doing what they're doing, Judge? That's what they've been doing for 26 years. Well, perhaps the, the redress that you seek isn't within the court system. Perhaps it's within the legislature. I think the California case that you cited to me, uh, which was from the 50s, uh, noted that in that state there's a criminal statute. I don't know if it's still viable. Maybe council knows. I don't know whether a statute of that nature would, would still be viable. But there were, there were efforts uh, to make it a crime to uh, defame someone who was deceased. Now, could the legislature determine that a, a, an article which is defamatory in nature uh, is, and is published after um, the subject of the article has been, de has been deceased for some period of time, uh, could they make that a, a cause of action? I don't see why not. I suppose they could. So what we're saying here this morning is that they could say whatever they want to say about my father, and I can't do anything about it. That's what we're saying. They continue publishing lies about my father, and I can do nothing about it. That's what we're saying here today. It would appear that the ability to hold them accountable for their statements, which are defamatory in nature, doesn't lie here. The cases are clear. Though all those cases that have been cited uh, were efforts by individuals to do exactly what you would like the court to do, and they were all unsuccessful. So. This is no longer a First Amendment issue, Judge. They went beyond the First Amendment issue a long time ago. Freedom of the press the question, is not me. The question is not being raised on, on First Amendment grounds, because First Amendment does not protect them from defamatory uh, action. The question is being based on, on civil law, whether or not a cause of action exists in favor of the survivors of an individual who is defamed when the defamation occurs after his or her death. And I'm satisfied that the law is that it does not. So the question then is, the, the other issue raised is whether they are obligated to uh, publish a, uh, a retraction, or if not a retraction, a, uh, a letter uh, outlining a counter view. You can address that if you want, uh, Mr. Uh. Well, Your Honor, again, uh, we find ourselves surrounded by uh, the freedom of the press, of an honest free press. And uh, I would add, though, there's a case, uh, uh, the Supreme Court of New Jersey, 1982, uh, Kolinkoff versus uh, the Community News. And there was reference made that there should be fair comment permitted uh, by the press. And as I recall, as I read, read this, it seemed that the restatement supports that uh, restatement second, Article 566. What, what year was that case? Uh, that was in 1982, Your Honor. You have, is it a reported decision? Yes, it is, Your Honor. It's 89 New Jersey 62. Is that one you cited to me in your papers? I think so. I'm not sure. If not, I have the uh, specific citation. Do you have a copy of the opinion? I don't think I have a copy of it. If I may.
Well, I don't think this case really, and I'll be honest, I haven't read it uh, from cover to cover, but I don't think it, it addresses our issue in, in any fashion. Um, first of all, it dealt with someone who was alive and was attempting to get uh, redress about ar articles that were uh, claimed to be uh, defamatory. It dealt with the question of, uh, of fair comment on a public matter. It doesn't address the question of whether the newspaper, in this instance, is under an obligation uh, to afford you a, an opportunity to express uh, a dissent or a, a counter view of the uh, contents of the article. All I ask for is an opportunity for fair comment. That's all I ask for. Well, again, uh, we're in the same position. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'll let you uh, my understanding of fair comment, Your Honor, is it's a defense. Available yeah, to that's the exactly correct. To publish it's my, my defense to the accusation. No, it's their defense to your accusation. We should turn around the other way as well, Judge. I mean, you know, the, the, the knife cuts both ways, you know. But um, the Miami Herald case seems to be dispositive of the, uh, the question. Uh, and it's an opinion of the uh, United States Supreme Court. It's <clears throat> compelling editors to publish what reasons tells them should not be published as violates well the First Amendment guarantee of free press. In other words, you want me to hold them accountable because they did not publish what you wanted them to publish respecting this article. Like anybody else, like a letter to the editor, put it all Well, they don't have to publish letters to the editor. So they can say whatever they want. I can make a newspaper today. I can publish the newspaper and say whatever I want about anybody, uh, anybody besides they'll do it, correct? No. That's what they're doing. Not correct. Because that's, that's not the standard by, what, by which we operate. I mean, you, you certainly can uh, uh, you know, establish a newspaper and you certainly can publish information, but you know, you're, you're going to be held to the same standards as, as, the, as, the, as the record or other media outlets would be with respect to knowingly and wantonly publishing false and defamatory information. You don't get the right to say anything about anyone. There are different rules. You know, Sullivan versus the New York Times allowed comments, uh, which I think Sullivan was a public official in Alabama, uh, and the New York Times uh, ran some articles back in the 60s about uh, you know, civil rights actions and and he, he sued, but lost, ultimately, because he was a, deemed to be a public figure. And there was fair comment about you know, what he may or may not have done, even if it was not, turned out not to be actually accurate. So I don't um, see that you have a, a viable cause of action uh, to compel the, the record uh, to publish um, a letter in their op-ed section or the, the letters to the editor section uh, regarding uh, Mr. Kelly's uh, comments. They're not, you know, they're not uh, required and, and the state cannot compel them to do that. Because we can compel them to do that. Tell them you have to publish this. Why can't we, the state then say you can't publish that? You know, what's the difference? It's got to end somewhere, Your Honor. Pardon? It's got to end somewhere. Well, it, it does, but unfortunately, this isn't the, the last station on the, on the track. So I am, under the circumstances, um, constrained to uh, grant the, uh, the motion uh, of the defendants. Uh, the record will reflect, of course, and I mean the court record, not the record, uh, that Mr. Kelly uh, consented to... Uh, jurisdiction being asserted over him so that the court's ruling will encompass claims that were made against him individually as well. Okay. Thank you for your time. Man. All right. Counsel, just wait for one moment.
she only gave me one copy of an order. Sorry. Oh, did I only provide one, Your Honor? That's all right. We, uh, we, we'll make uh, <coughs> copies. Okay. If you bring that into my secretary, she'll make your copies. Just make sure you leave the original with her. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Thank you. Thank you.